Okay, so time to do the thing which I already mentioned about in my Crosshair 4 Extreme overview video. So I still have two of these Asus Crosshair 5 Formula boards. One is already mounted on, on this uh, Divastec hard test bench and the other one is over there. And they are both in kind of non-working state. Both of them I managed to uh, corrupt the bars when I was constantly swapping between uh, like the newest bars version and one of the older ones for the dual core and quad core fan arms because for some reason the newest bars was required for the new Vishera CPUs like A350 and A370, A370E and so on and that bios wasn't so good or I'm not even sure if it could post with some of those old dual core and quad core uh, fan arms so I had to uh, change constantly between the BIOS versions in order to post with those old like dual cores like 555 or 560 and for some reason the BIOS uh, got corrupted on both of these ports but otherwise they should be in working state so if we can just post with a new BIOS chip it should be alright so I have this uh, other one already uh, uh, placed over here the uh, BIOS chip is over here but it's it doesn't this board doesn't have, this board doesn't currently have a bus chip at all but we will just use one of these replacement chips over here and it should already be programmed with the newest bars for the crosshair 5 formula and then we will use this uh, uh, fx a150 which was given to me by one uh, local user so thanks to alexi for lending me this CPU just to confirm uh, these boards so we don't really need that CPU for anything else because it's loaned and it's not mine but yeah so the sad thing about the Crosshair 5 formula is that it doesn't have the BIOS flashback utility so if you look at the rear I.O. part of the motherboard we can see that there's all only uh, the uh, BIOS reset button but there's no USB flashback uh, functionality at all. There's the white USB port over there but it's only for the ROG Connect. There's an ROG Connect switch over here so you can only use like a laptop to control the overclocking features of this board but you don't have you don't have the BIOS flashback utility. I'm not fully sure that uh, at which generation it was introduced. I, I think it was either uh, Maximus for Extreme but it was at least with the Rampage 4 Extreme because I used the BIOS flashback utility with the Rampage 4 Extreme a lot. So uh, if it wasn't already introduced with some other board, it was already uh, just around the corner. But it, I think it came with the Maximus 4 Extreme, but I'm, I'm not fully sure about this. But yeah. So here we have the two uh, replacement BIOS chips with, I think, the, I think the newest version is 1701 or 1702. So we will use that and see if we can post this with, the, with that CPU over there. So we only have to see if we can post the rig so we don't have to go into the operating system and run anything. So we will just put the CPU in. We will use that simple graphics card over there. One stick of DDR3 memory. A Seasonic uh, 1300 watt platinum power supply is already there. So we, don't, we only have the 24 pin plus the 8 pin connected over there. And I will just use this uh, Debauer Beast container on top of the CPU because we don't really need like a good cooling, uh, cooling solution that one will do just fine for this testing purpose because we will not run the rig for lo any longer than like half a minute or even, or one minute max but yeah so keyboard is there so let's uh, place the power chip in the board and see how it looks like the rig uh, how the rig looks like and let's try to post the system so the replacement bus chip is packed in this like piece of, is it called Styrox or what is it, what is it called in English, but I'm not sure. So let's pull this out and it should, there's only one way of putting it in. So there's like a small notch like marked on the PCB over there. So the text, uh, I mean, and it has to match the small bump on the bus chip. So over here, so that's, so that's the way of knowing that you are putting in, putting it in the correct way. Hard to do this with one hand because I don't have a tripod over here. 
Uh, but yeah, you get the idea anyways. And then CPU, you just match with the uh, white arrow over there on the socket. But I will do this with two hands now, and I will show you how it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so that's how the whole system looks like. So that's how the Bosch chip looks like in the socket. So the uh, small notch over here matches the marking on the PCB. So you know that it's over there like the correct way. It's a bit hard to show on camera, but you will get the idea anyways, I'm sure. But the uh, text on top of the chip is like correct way. So it's like uh, meant for the user to read it. So the text is not like upside down. So it's the correct way. So the top part of the text is uh, facing or like uh, towards the uh, top part of the board. But yeah, one stick of memory is in chip. The CPU itself is uh, in the socket with the Bauer Beast container. Both of the power connectors are there. So 24 pin plus the 8 pin. So let's try to turn on the system. So turn on the power supply. And uh, we got these markings over here. I mean, the buttons have lighted up, but this board doesn't have. Uh, this board doesn't have debug LED. It turned on. Digital. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it did work. Yeah. This is normal, normal for this monitor, so it's not about uh, the system. So this monitor is a bit old, but yeah, so it's posting definitely. So let's quickly go to the uh, monitor part. Temp. So 32, 32 on the CPU, 25 North Bridge, so on and so on. But yeah, it's working. So it was good. So first board is revived. 1.344 is the stock voltage of the CPU. So yeah. So we can definitely confirm that, that this whole thing is working. So uh, no need to really test it anymore. So let's move on to the second board and do the same thing. Yeah, I'm sure the pot will uh, warm up slowly by doing this. But yeah, very nice thing. So I was sure about the board. So definitely no, no damage on the board whatsoever. So just power chip corruption. But that's the main reason why you would want a BAUS flashback procedure on a motherboard, or at least two BAUS, so that you can avoid like these things. Because some people, some people could even like RMA a motherboard because of this, like BAUS corruption. So it would be an easy way from many from manufacturers' point of view to avoid any like useless uh, RMA returns. But yeah, so let's move on to the second board. Now, one thing about removing your cooling solution from an AMD CPU is, or the sad thing about uh, the whole thing is that on AMD platforms, there's no like proper way to lock the CPU in the socket. So uh, very often when you remove your cooling solution from the CPU itself, the CPU often comes from the socket. So if you use AMD platforms a lot and you constantly swap your cooling solution or your uh, parts, you should get the new uh, uh, lock, uh, CPU locker tool which they released for the new Ryzen CPUs. So now what I will try, because of course I have easy access to the CPU, I will try to hold the CPU in the socket with uh, my fingers like that and I will remove uh, the dead bow beast with the other hand. So if I don't do that, the thermal paste uh, suction will uh, take the CPU with the pot from the socket. And we don't want that because that risks uh, the some, some of the CPU pins to bend because on AMD, the pins are on the CPU itself, not, on the, not in the motherboard socket. And so let's do that and let's swap the motherboard, the other, uh, the other motherboard to the test bench. Okay, so the other board is in, I mean, on the test bench right now. And it's still, this one still has the old, uh, Bosch chip in the on the board, which I managed to corrupt as well. So let's try to remove it just by hand. There's actually a tool for this purpose. So you could 
by a separate tool like pulse remover tool or it's it's called something like that but they should come off with just finger so yeah it's coming that's how it looks like but it's a bit hard to do on camera with just one hand so sorry for that let's put the chip on the side over there and take the replacement chip from this packaging material over here just check that it's the correct way around stupid this is really hard to do on camera with just one hand oh wait so yeah it should go right go in right now yeah yeah that's how it looks like but yeah so if you can see there's like a small notch on this part of the bus chip and so you know it's the correct way in the text is like uh, on the top like uh, the correct way around so the text on the power chip is not upside down so that's how it looks like so now let's just place the cpu in the socket once again yeah the golden arrow is lined with the white arrow on the PCB. Lock it down like that. And yeah, now it's just the cooling solution plus the graphics card. And I will I will do that on off camera and then let's just see if this board posts as well. Okay, and that's how the second board looks like when it's all set up once again. One stick of DDR3 memory. Devour piece with the CPU in the socket. The old NVIDIA 6500 GT and the power chip is in. Let's turn on the power supply. The button lights turn on once again. Oh, we cannot let... So do not press that in. We don't want 4 GHz load uh, for the test attempt. And Hold on. Some weird issue with this one. So I will let, I will turn off the power supply. I will try to clear the CMOS and turn it turn it on once again. So I will try to do a CMOS clear. again oh now wait yeah so maybe it's just because the board isn't like placed properly on top of the test bench I even removed the graphics card PCI Express bracket because it was placed the wrong way in so uh, it has to be the other way around to uh, fit with the graphics cards properly. But yeah, it's working. So both of the boards in working state. Temperature monitor, 37 degrees on the CPU again. It's quite warm, but of course the mount isn't proper, but doesn't really matter. So we have confirmed that both of these boards are working. Same VID on both of the boards. So 1.344. On the vehicle on both of these boards with the same CPU so yeah very nice thing so I can sell both of these boards now there's like a, just for some yeah some like small issue with the uh, buttons on the motherboard Maybe it's like bad contact or the PCB is bending a little bit when it's pressed, but yeah. So that's how we repaired two 
Asus Crosshair 5 Formula muffler boards with corrupted bars. If you have done this uh, yourself, then maybe you can share your experience down below. But yeah, I will link the place where I bought these bars chips uh, in, the uh, in the description box down below. So I bought these from like Bars Flash D, like Bars Flash Germany, eBay website. So if you have like some of these boards, you need like a separate Bars chip with a Bars chip already programmed. Uh, with, I mean, with a BAUS file already programmed in the BAUS chip, then you can definitely order one yourself and use it to uh, revive a dead muffin board like this. But yeah, so now I have confirmed that they are both working. I can sell these boards because I don't really have any use for them. But yeah, so if you like to see this video, then give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.